Our next speaker is Dilip Sarkar. Dilip is an expert in yoga therapy who combines his 45-year experience in conventional medicine with knowledge of integrative medicine, Ayurveda, and yoga. Dilip's current list of engagements and responsibilities within the worlds of integrative medicine and are, oh, let's see, let me redo that. No, that's good. Dilip's current list of engagements and responsibilities within the worlds of are within the worlds of integrative medicine and include work with the American Heart Association, the National Ayurvedic Medical Association, the American Association of Integrative Medicine, and he is also president of the board of directors of the International Association of Yoga Therapists. Dilip. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, Dane. Thank you. Who could I thank? Linda, Deborah, Walt Smithsonian. Look at uh, what you have done. Uh, my presentation primarily is a yoga practice in modern societies. I have a large number of patients who are enjoying a quality life, almost disease-free, drug-free, with a daily practice of yoga. And I'm going to share with you so you can use it probably in your practice or in your teaching. And primarily it is a, a gentle relaxation of the physical body with a, a set of effortless pranayama in stages until a desired time, or we call it a prescription of pranayama is given, and they continue that for daily practice. And this is basically causes restoration of your homeostasis, what we call homeokinetics, and a simple word, it is our power of healing. And it also provides, as Dean said, that it is a wellness, physical, mental, and spiritual wellness to counteract the illness. I teach a large number of physicians and uh, uh, you know, the healthcare providers about yoga therapy, and I've been doing it for a long period of time, and when I talk to them, I talk to their language. I talk that it increases baroreceptor sensitivity. It prevents sudden crisis from changing the blood pressure, which is known to cause, you know, from cardiology standpoint, even ruptured plaque, acute coronary syndrome. It decreases the chemoreceptor sensitivity. So the effect of pranayama primarily shifts to the parasympathetic activation rather than the change in the pH in the blood. It causes, we have a portable ultrasound and a portable echocardiogram machine. We do the whole hemodynamics in presence of the physician so they can see what is going on. It's a parasympathetic activation. We cause the neuroplasticity, which Dean has talked about a little bit. I learned how to lower my respiratory rate. After 30, 40 times, the brain gets a signal. That's when I need to breathe. So I breathe that way when I'm awake, when I'm asleep. Uh, a new area, we talk about a little bit more, yoga therapy for space health. One of our faculty members who is in the audience here, Joan Varnikos, she finded out the physiological changes of an astronaut up in the International Space Station as a, as a change is opposite of what yoga does to our physical body. So she's recommending as a countermeasure. And we'll talk a little bit about IOYT. Basically, yoga therapy is an adaptation of yoga practice with chronic ailments. I have people coming 300 pounders with a diabetes, hypertension, or a person on a uh, multiple sclerosis, uh, paralyzed on a wheelchair. I have a one lady with a back pain, she cannot even sit down. She does uh, pranayama laying down on the mat. It is basically, as I said, self-transformation. As you heard, the end slide of the is transformation. What is transformation in yoga therapy? We get a patient with a disease in Sanskrit called a rogi. And the rogi, we put a gentle relaxation of the physical body with the pranayama in stages. And I'll show you what pranayama is. We convert into no disease called nirogi. And that nirogi then starts doing a daily practice of yoga, converts themselves to yogi and yogini. Then the what is Timothy was saying that yoga practices can do. Person with the disease when they see me first cannot do what you know about yoga, even the eight limbs of yoga. This is what Desika Char always said, 
in stages, impossible become possible. We start with asana, called sthiram sukham asanam. We should be still, happy, and in poses. We bring the awareness, no pain. Whenever you sit down, you're able to sit down for a long period of time. We go through different stages of asana. Beginning of asana is called arumbha, beginning. Muscle contracts. Staying in the pose, muscle starts to relax. Before relaxing, muscle goes a little bit of face called fasciculation, the twitching. When the twitching comes down, it's called sthiti, stability. Then when there's a profound relaxation, activation of parasympathetic system, you call it visharjan. Then you bring a relaxation response. We sit down, when you sit down, you know, all of you, every time you sit down, sit down in a chair, slide all the way to the back, keep your spine straight. The moment you keep your spine straight, you get a relaxation of paraspinal muscles. We bring the mudras, health in your hand. When I'm talking, I'm moving my hand before my tongue. My hand is connected to my mind. By touching index finger and thumb, quiet down my mind. Five senses keeps us awake, alert. So fifth limb of yoga, pratahara. The most powerful of senses is the vision. Eye is directly connected through your brain. Close our eyes. Then an effortless breathing. Sit down, we breathe, breathing out longer than breathing in. Lung is like a balloon, it has a four liter capacity, we only breathe 500 cc. So then we create a vibration, you did a little bit of, you know, ohm this morning, ohm has a frequency of a frequency of brain. Two frequency interacts, it causes a harmonic resonance and cancels each other. Pranayamas are done completely effortlessly. We have person who can do pranayama 30 seconds to start with. I'll show you an example. But slowly, the muscles which control our breathing are called skeletal muscles. They can be trained. Slowly and slowly, they go to a method. There's a timing, determination, and attainment. This is the prescription we give. One hour of practice daily, 25 minutes of asanas and pranayama, 10 minutes of meditation, pranayama done effortlessly. These are list of pranayamas. We go one at a time. Bastrika, Kapalbhati is an active inhalation, exhalation. You know all this because all of you are practitioners. I don't have to go through. But these are the timing. This is the ultimate, not on the first day. This is from rogi to nirogi to yogini. So see what happens. This is a lady came in a wheelchair, multiple sclerosis, completely paraplegic. In four months, she's up, standing, and she's so excited. Instead of transform, she put a license plate called transforming. She <laughs> called me one day, see what I've done to my license plate. This is a fellow comes to me, 73 years old. Severe ischemic cardiomyopathy, ejection fraction of 10 to 20%. Significant coronary artery disease. As seen by two cardiac surgeons, they refused his surgery. He started doing pranayama within six months, He's doing a crane, bakasana, he's doing a half plow. He goes for ejection fraction with up to 40%. Cardiologists understand. This is a relaxation response, relaxation of the afterload. With the breathing, is an increase in the preload. It's a very simplest way to, just to show you. When I show the physicians, they understand. So I teach the physicians. This is the, our organization, International Association of Yoga Therapists, founded 25 years back by this man sitting here, Larry Payne. And another Chabillard there, we have 25 years. It is, we are bringing that yoga to the healthcare. Our mission is to establish yoga as a recognized and respected specialty. We have about 3,300 members, about 120 medical school. We do these conferences, we do a symposium on yoga therapy and research. We have done five of them. Sixth one is scheduled. You can see Lorenzo Cohen is sitting in the audience here. And it is in June in Austin. The Symposium in Yoga Research, which was the really a dream of uh, Sadbir Khalsa. We have done three of them. Fourth one is scheduled for uh, uh, September in Kripalu. So I give it CME grand rounds. I go to the Department of Endocrine. I give a yoga therapy for diabetes. Go to cardiology, give a yoga for cardiac wellness. My friend Alex giving a talk in search of ancient, ancient wisdom. I go to different hospitals, educating healthcare professionals. I go to the, you know, this is the general staff meeting in a hospital in New York. This is in uh, Maryland. 
yoga therapy for cardiovascular disease. It's a physician's conference in Florida. This is one in, uh, in Maryland. Uh, we do a medical understanding of yoga. The last one we did November 30th, uh, Sadbir was there, and uh, here Sadbir was one of the presenters. We do that. We had the first one in the country to do a category one CME approved the yoga therapy for medical professionals. Sadbir does, talks about research. I talk about the practice. We did almost five of them. Sixth and seventh is already in schedule. We let the physician go to the pub bed. I said, go ahead and look at a search engine. You put a yoga therapy, you get uh, over 2,300 articles. You go through your clinical trials, look at the studies you, you get. These are the, my, 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 my colleague, you know, Alex. He, he has a tool with uh, your uh, <coughs> portable Doppler echocardiogram, and he is doing and looking at the baroreceptor sensitivity. What it comes up with, like a person who stays in a headstand, when you put the head down, the intracranial pressure goes up, intraocular pressure goes up, carotid pressure goes up, you feel miserable, you cannot talk, you cannot breathe. But keeping your head down, body's homeokinetics comes in play. Baroreceptor sensitivity increases, the pressure inside the brain comes down, pressure in carotid comes down, the human body will allow you to get into the headstand. Here he's doing a blood flow in the carotid artery, essentially normal. He is doing a transcranial Doppler blood flow inside the brain. Also, what he's doing is doing a blood flow in the in the uh, popliteal artery in the carotid artery. Hemodynamics is same. In contrast to the belief, headstand does not increase blood flow in the brain. You will only be able to do headstand when your hemodynamics stabilizes. There's a friend of mine. I know him very well. He's a Russian. He is studying from a physician perspective. How can you sit down at the yogi in a fire? They went to Himalayas, they whole, took the whole team with the whole portable echocardiogram and ultrasound machine. They did a technique in Tibetan called a Tumo, in yoga called Agnisara, the inner fire, where they find it out. It's a profound parasympathetic activation with a peripheral vasodilatation. So basically what happens when it's a cold, normal response is the blood vessel underneath the skin constricts. Here is completely opposite. The blood vessel underneath the skin opens up. There is a warm blood. It's a barrier between outside cold and the body. That's why they're able to stay like that. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and just give you a couple of minutes I have left to it that this is a new field we're talking about, yoga therapy for space health. This is a concept study. The John Vornikos, who is to for uh, your NASA, wrote a book about physiological changes of microgravity. What she find it out, the important physiological changes is premature aging of the body. People stay six months in the International Space Station, they come back 10 years older, and yoga basically is anti-aging. We wrote a concept paper, yoga therapy for counteracting adverse effect, me and uh, our uh, chairman of our, our university, we presented it at first to the annual meeting of American Society of Gravitational Space Biology. We published this paper. And finally, we did a website. There is a website here called Yoga for Space Health. And here I'm teaching yoga to the NASA community. This is NASA Langley. This is NASA in California. And here is an astronaut. Frank Petronigro, he's going to the space in 2015. He's getting trained for two years to do yoga. I presented one in the first international workshop on space health. I presented yoga therapy for metabolic changes. Here is the one, uh, we did a first international workshop on space art. I presented yoga therapy for space health. And, uh, and one of our chairmen, others Deepak, presented World Yoga Day, yoga therapy for health and space travelers. Uh, recently, the last one, the friend Prickta Negro, who is an uh, astronaut, he presented 64th International Astronautical Congress just in September in Beijing, and uh, Space Wishes, he presented the whole segment for Yoga for Space Health. And uh, all these things you know, in my website, I have a DVD all there, and I'm going to stop here. I think I have exactly on my time, and thank you for letting me present the Yoga in Modern Society.